want you to understand that. Rewards will come when your motive is in the right place. But unfortunately, you could run around Mount Fallon preaching the gospel. Yes, that's good. People are going to come to Jesus. Remember what Paul said? He said, some of them preach it just to make fun or to scorn me or to put me in more trouble. Some are preaching it to really share the gospel. But he said, it really doesn't matter. Whether they're preaching it to scorn me, Paul, to make fun of me, to put me in trouble, in that way, Jesus is being preached. And souls are being saved. But after you preach and say souls, where is your reward? Hallelujah. We understand the reward of preaching the gospel. We understand the reward of saving souls. But what's your motive? Get out of the way, and your motive is for you to build a kingdom for yourself, to build a name for yourself, this cathedral. Oh my goodness, look at this church. They just started in 2016. Wow. It's a cathedral now. Chief pastor, chief bishop, presiding, presiding, <laughs> presiding and presiding and CEO and all want so that your church everywhere they go I have it's my church it's my church it's my church when did the church live being the, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. to your church this church is the church of our Lord Jesus Christ he says I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it but when it becomes your church and then you want your church in every part of the world so that your name, not the name of Jesus, is lifted. So that wherever they go, they say, oh, oh, that's a great woman of God. Oh, Pastor Trotman, oh, she's such a powerful woman of God. And then when you're coming, every, oh, oh my goodness, brethren, check your motive. It's good to serve the Lord. There's reward in serving the Lord. He said he's almost his servants that serve him. You read the book of Esther, and you hear about Malak, um, Mordecai. Mordecai did good things. When you serve with good motive, when you have, you, you know what you're doing, and you do a good job, you are honored. You are honored by the government of the world. You are honored by men and women, but most importantly, God honors you. Amen? God honors you for serving him. And I want you to know that even though you're serving God, not because God needs you, but because you need God, yet he will honor you. Amen? And if you serve him in honor, it's very important to God as well. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. You must honor God. In your service of God, your coming to church today should be to honor God. If you're not sitting here because you want to honor God, if you're not sitting here because the name of Jesus must be lifted up, then please repent. Mm. Lord, I came to church because I need this, that, and that. That is good. But I will also, I came here first of all to honor your name. Amen? Amen? When my needs and what I want take second place, and glorifying and lifting up the, the name of Jesus takes the first place, that is when I will be rewarded for coming to church. Hallelujah. So when you wake up in the morning and you want to come to church, please, we are, taking, we are putting in so much to go unrewarded. Since you're traveling so much, right? You come from Brooklyn. You come from, some of us come from afar. Some of us will walk at night. Instead of going home to sleep, we come here. And you sit here for hours. Oh my goodness. It's good. It's an honorable thing. But what I'm saying is, do not lose your reward. Be motive. It's very important. Christians don't talk about motive a lot. And nobody preaches motive anymore. We're just told to serve. We're told to fast. We're told to pray. We're told to study the Bible. We're told to preach and everything. And all of them are important. But I stress the issue of reward.
the world. Bible says a laborer is worthy of their reward. So there's no point going through all this and going home with no reward. That's why we need to check ourselves. My motive is important. The first motive that I must want to motive is bring honor to the name of Jesus. Anything you do, you could be the one that sweeps, you could be the one that opens the door for people, you can be the one that preach the gospel here every day, you can be the one that leads us in praise and worship. If your praise and worship and your good voice does not put honor of God first, please, you're losing your reward. You're breaking your voice for nothing. You're coming here on Fridays to practice for nothing. When you sit on this drum, must I honor God? And when I honor God, I know that there is an attitude. Amen? My attitude tells me who I'm honoring. If I honor God, I am not puffed up. My blessing, my service in the house of God, my coming to Bible studies, it, it, it's for my blessing. But it must be for the honor of God. Why? Because when I hear the word and I learn, I am able to do better for God. I'm able to become a better servant of God. I grow and I am lifted up in the Lord. So brethren, hallelujah. And I like this verse 27. John 6. It says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath the Father sealed. When you labor, what are you laboring for? You see, your motive should not be, and I know what this was really addressing the guys that were looking for food, right? Amen. But really, sometimes too, and I said it before, and it's true. It could be because I don't have a job and I need a better job. And I'm in the house of God. It's not bad. Amen? That's what he provides. But, say to your neighbor, but, but, what part of that honors God? What part of that honors God? Is it that I just want to come, get my job, and then bury myself in my job? Oh, Pastor Trump, man, I'm working. Yes, I work seven days a week. You know, if I don't work seven days a week, I'm not going to feed myself. My money is not enough. Yes, ma ba 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 All you came to church to do was to get a job to abandon God. Or you want to get a job so you're able to feed your family and do the right things and also serve God. Because you can also serve God with your income and your increase. And let's not even go there. But if your purpose is to find a job and then say bye-bye to the house of God, then it's nothing. It carries no reward. I don't care how much faith you had. And you put that faith in and God answered that prayer. But what happens after that is very important. It really tells your motive. So all I'm saying, and I'm not going to keep us long because I have so much here, and if I go through this, we're not going to go home early. But I think the message is clear. The message is clear. The message is God honors his children. God wants to honor you. And in honoring you, you must serve him. Because he doesn't go out there and begins to honor people on the street. He picks up the addict and he brings the addict to church and says, Oh, this is my servant in whom I am well pleased. Can God ever say that about a, an addict who don't have nothing to do with him? No, he can say, I really love him and I want to help him, right? But he's not going to say, come and give him the best seat in the house. He deserves to be honored. Give him the best food. He deserves to be honored because he has really made me proud. Can I? A prostitute that's sleeping with everybody is not an honor to God. He's going to reach out to her or reach out to him and help them out, right? 
so they can come in and serve him in honor. What I'm saying is, you have to have a relationship with God to honor him. So if you don't know your father, like Pastor Solomon taught us this morning about fatherhood, if you don't have that relationship, you cannot honor him. And he does not, he's not looking for people out there. He's looking for his servants that serve him to honor. And he's always looking. The Mordecai, God understands honor. Why did the king, why did the king stay up at night? God took sleep from him. Mm -hmm. Amen? God took sleep from him because somebody deserved to be honored. Now, why did Mordecai call a fast? Why? Mordecai did not call a fast to save himself and his family alone. He could have done that. His, his niece or his cousin is the queen. All he needed to do is gather his family and go to the king and say, spare my life and the life of my family. He didn't need to call for the whole of Israelites, but he did, and that's why God honored him. Amen? As soon as he started to intercede, as soon as he started to supplicate, as soon as he went and started to make plans to set the people free, his generation, the Jews, not just his father's house. If you read the book of Esther, you even hear him rebuking Esther. Because Esther had to know that I, when I serve God, I serve God. Amen? I don't serve God for me. Esther, Esther was going to say, it's okay. I'm safe where I am. After all, I'm the queen. But Mordecai woke him up. And in that process, God remembered to honor who? Mordecai. Because his motive was right. He did what he did to glorify God in the name of Jesus. So you have to understand that in our work with God, in our relationship with God, everything that we do, we must seek God's honor. Jesus said, I don't seek my own honor. I seek the honor of him that sent me. Sent me. I seek his glory in the name of Jesus. And also as you're seeking the honor of God, like to honor God, he will also honor you. And it's the honor that comes from God that lasts. Amen? Amen. If, you, if you don't believe me, go and ask Haman. Go and find Haman's family. Haman was so honored. He was so honored. But in a twinkle of an eye, the same king that honored him killed him. Because his honor, the honor he was seeking was not the honor that come from God. When we seek God and the honor that come from God, God will honor us back. Amen? And when God honors us, is the honor that remains. It's the honor that will make men to honor you, whether they like it or not. God woke up the king and he saw us at night and said, wait a minute, I have a servant who deserves to be honored. He had to go to the books. He didn't go to the books because he felt like, oh, I, I, this man needs honor. No, God woke him up and troubled him. And so he had to wake up at night and remembered Mordecai and said, what honor has been done to this man? If you stay in the service of God, you will not lose your honor. Anybody that's sitting on your honor, God will push them out and wake them up to give you what belongs to you. Amen? Amen. But he says, he honors his servants. Amen? Are you a servant of God? Are you serving him? The Bible says if you serve him, you must serve him with all your heart. Amen? You must serve him to glorify his name. You're not serving him to get puffed up. You're not serving him so that the world will know that this one is a servant of God. You're not serving him so that once you pick up the mic and they say, so oh, this is a prophet. No, you're prophesying to the glory of God. You're doing everything that God has put in you to understand that nothing I have is mine. Everything I have has been given to me by God. And therefore, I must honor God with my gifts, with my blessings, with my anointing, with the abilities he gave me, and even with my money. I must honor God. And that must be the motive of serving God. Amen? Of serving God. So if you want your reward, and I do want my reward, 
Sure is good when you get paid, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness, in this country, right? Nobody lives an hour pay. That's my money! I need my Do you know that even the people that receive the public assistance, when they come to the case workers, they say, it's my money. It's my money. And I don't want to say anything. They deserve it because that's put in place, OK? But you work for it. You must deserve it. Amen? And you must want it. Don't work for nothing. Work for the reward. But don't just, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I don't want to sound like I'm contradicting myself. Walk to honor God and know that you will sure get your rewards. Amen? Because the Bible said the laborer is worthy of his rewards. Please stand up with me. I'm not going to stay long. Stand up with me. Hallelujah. Even Jesus, we were taught this morning that Jesus said, when you pray, don't pray in so many words, right? Vain words and repeat them and then Once you send the message, I believe this morning the message has been sent. Amen? So I want us to ask ourselves, just begin to pray and talk to God. Begin to just say, God, in any way that I have served you in with the wrong motive, I have ministered with the wrong motive, I ask you to forgive me. In any way, Father, that I come in the house just to show off and not to honor your name. That means wherever you have done anything that is not in honor of God, even though it's a service of God, even though in the outside you seem to, but you know in your heart that you just wanted them to know how much.